Hi. Uh, thanks. It's great to be here. Very excited to be at the Up Experience. Last year I spoke at the Rival Conference, the Down Experience, and it was a real bummer. Um, so my job with the New York Times is I'm the tech critic. So I review gadgets. Um, the FedEx man comes and brings me uh, the latest phones and computers and stuff, and I review them, write them up, and sadly send them back when I'm done. But it beats working, you know? So today, all I'm going to do is a show and tell, sort of a magic show uh, of some of the coolest things. I bet some things you haven't heard of or seen. And, um, and they were quite serious about turning off the Wi-Fi. If you're on the Netgear network, none of the demos will work, and this will be the lamest act today. It'll be your fault. So could we go to my slide? Um, when I do the... Uh, Oh, great. <laughs> oh, okay. So the projector isn't going to work either. <laughs> and what? You're sizing me? Ah! Okay, yeah, that's what the talk is called when I do it for corporate events. Today it's called Dave's Mobile Gadget Funhouse. Um, so when we are talking to our grandchildren, I am absolutely convinced that we will talk like when I was your age and we wanted to check our email, we, asked to, we used to have to drive around town looking for a coffee shop. We did. We had Wi-Fi bu bubbles. Yay, 100 feet across. Yeah. What is this country's problem that we cannot have ubiquitous wireless? Thank you. I'm David Pogue. No, no. Honestly, we build buildings with running water and toilets and venting and electricity on every wall. Where's the internet? So right now, all we have is these incredibly lame, half-finished half solutions to get online wherever we are. And it's not just for laptops, all kinds of things. iPod touches and cameras and ebook readers, picture frames, game consoles. We all need wireless wherever we go. So the solutions are air cards. Oh, guess what? We have Craig, the amazing cameraman. No, we don't. <laughs> OK, can I just do this whole thing again? Um, are you Craig? Hey, David, come on out. All my things are tiny, so you're going to, Craig's going to show you what I'm holding up. Not that this one's that important, but anyway, so for 60 bucks a month, you can get one of these and plug it into your laptop, and it uses the cellular network to turn it into, to get you online wherever you are, but it only works on your laptop. Okay, stay there. So another alternative is to use tethering on a, on a smartphone. If you have a fancy phone, you, this thing gets online and transmits the signal by Bluetooth to your laptop. Still expensive, still iffy, still slow. So I don't know if you've seen this, though. This is crazy. It's called the MiFi. You can get it from Verizon or Sprint. This is a personal, pocketable, portable, battery-powered Wi-Fi hotspot that you leave in your pocket or your purse. I am a Wi-Fi bubble right now. <laughs> and if you're really nice, I'll let you see the password on the back. Five of you can be online with me if you know the password on the back. Yeah, I'm not going to really show it to you because you'd bring down the whole thing. Thank you, Craig. Great job. Um, so, so the, 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 and, and this would let all those gadgets in the car or whatever. And, and one time I was on this plane and we were stuck on the runway for two hours. We'd pulled away from the terminal, so there was no way there could be any Wi-Fi. And I'm working away with this thing in my pocket. And the guy next to me is getting increasingly agitated, like looking at my screen. He's not looking at what I'm doing. He's looking at the little Wi-Fi signal on my menu bar. And finally he's like, OK, how the hell are you doing that? He was like driving him crazy. I'm like, would you like the password, sir? So it's completely awesome. And it, it changes things really radically. Because if you think about it, what is an iPod Touch except an iPhone minus AT&T, right? So imagine. That this, but what the, iP what the iPod Touch can do is make free phone calls over Skype or Line 2, which I'll talk about in a minute, as long as it's in a Wi-Fi hotspot. But when are you in a Wi-Fi hotspot? All the time now! So totally changes everything. Um, there's this little memory card called the, uh, the iFi card. Yes, everything I do today will rhyme. iFi, Wi-Fi. Um, this is the iFi uh, card. It's a regular memory card for any camera that turns it into a Wi-Fi camera. So I take pictures. They are automatically transmitted to Flickr or my choice of photo website, plus backed up on my computer at home, as long as I'm in a Wi-Fi hotspot, essentially turning that memory card into a bottomless memory card. As I can take pictures forever, you know, 40 gigabytes of pictures, and they're constantly streaming off the camera backed up on the internet. 
as long as I'm in a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is all the time. It's like completely amazing. Um, the next major thing is I want to talk about is, is the app phone. People say, oh, an app phone, it's, uh, it's like in between a cell phone and a laptop. And I say, no, it's not. An app phone is an entire new category. It's extremely revolutionary, and I'll, I'll prove it in just a second. Um, if you think about it, these are the things that an app phone has in it, like an iPhone or an or a Android phone, that your laptop doesn't. So it's got a touch screen, input and output for audio and video, um, all these sensors, like a proximity sensor, a light sensor, a tilt sensor, a gyroscope, a GPS. Sorry, your laptop does not have a gyroscope in it. Um, so the cool thing is that programmers could do all these amazing things with those tools by writing software that taps into it. That's why there's 250,000 apps for the iPhone and you know, 60,000 for, for Android phones, um, all written often by amateurs. And just to give you an example of some of the things you can do with these things, if you've had an iPhone for a while, you might have noticed, Craig, <laughs> you might have noticed that there's no keyboard on it. So we've turned into this generation of people going, oh, God damn it, you know, just. <laughs> Am I right? Has nobody else noticed this? <laughs> so I'm going to show you this incredible app. It is free, free to use, and I really, really, really need you to turn off your Wi-Fi. Really close the laptops or this will not work. Too many of us. Oh, you would have loved it. Sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> Whenever you do tech demos in public, you're like completely asking for trouble. And the network's been having all trouble all day. Ah, well, anyway, I'll describe it. It's like charades. Three words. Sounds like really cool. Um, <laughs> I guess I don't need you, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you made a valiant effort. We were unable to process, all right, whoever's blogging, hope you're having a great time. <laughs> anyway, it's speech recognition, and it's incredible. You speak into it, you go, hi, Cheryl, comma, it's David, period. I'm stuck at the airport, comma, I won't be able to make your little conference, sorry, bye, period. And then you click done, and up pops the transcription, perfect. And then there's a button that says, where do you want to send this? And your choices are, uh, Twitter, email, text message, or Facebook, right off the phone. You've typed nothing. It's absolutely incredible. But you'll never know, you babies. You have to have your Wi-Fi. <laughs> just, just kidding. Did you see when Steve Jobs had to do that at his own press conference? <laughs> it's like, let me show you my cool new feature. Everyone, turn off your Wi-Fi or I'm going to get pissed. <laughs> Maybe that should be my approach. Um, so here's another classic example. Um, an ocarina is a South American wind instrument, classical instrument. This guy has created an iPhone version. It's a dollar. He's a California music professor, and he wrote this thing in his spare time, and it's become this mega hit. In seven months, he sold a million and a half copies. And basically, you blow into the microphone, and you finger the holes, okay? So... <clears throat> Whoops, sorry, so no, let me do better than that. Um, and so you go online and you see people who are so good at this. There's 2,500 pieces of sheet music for Ocarina. And these people, like, Check this out. I need audio. Need audio? I don't have audio either. All right, I'm going to come out here with shirt cardboards. Do we have audio? Yes, no, maybe. Tell you tomorrow. Oh, here we go. On YouTube. Quartets of Ocarina. I don't know what this guy's. So, sadly, I can't get online, or I would show you the most amazing thing of all. If you tap the little globe button, you get this. Hey, Craig, are you free? Um, <laughs> you, you see the, the, the globe right here, and those one and a half million people who've bought the app emit little tiny glowing dots 
that shoot out of the, the different countries, you can listen in as they play this. Little French kids and Swiss kids and... And then you hit this upper right arrow here, and the world spins and goes to another country, and you just dip in. You know, some, some three-year-old Japanese girl is going, did you hear that terrible American try to play somewhere over the rainbow? Yeah. They're listening in, and it's totally amazing, and you find, you literally, I mean, this sounds like incredibly racist, but it's true. China and Japan, they are so good. They're like, do 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 They're like, amazing. Anyway, thank you so much, Greg. Um, the way I see it, if everybody had this, there would be no more wars. People would be like, he can't play the F-sharp either. We're all brothers under the skin, you know. <laughs> Completely amazing stuff. Um, so this is the guy who wrote it. This is the Stanford music professor. And um, what does he do for an encore after he becomes a millionaire in seven months by writing this little app? Well, he writes... Um, <laughs> He writes, I am T-Pain. T-Pain is a rapper who became known for auto-tuning himself. Auto-tune is a music processing effect uh, that is used to correct the pitch of Britney Spears and Taylor Swift. And trust me, all of them, oh my God, when I talked to the Up Junior experience, they're all high schoolers, when I implied that Taylor Swift needed pitch correction, oh my God, they're like, They were livid! Um, it's true. Um, I almost had the out experience. Um, the, um, the, the, uh, the really cool thing about autotune is if you crank it all the way, it turns every pitch, even when you're speaking, to one of the notes of the piano, right? You remember Cher? Do you believe in love after love? Remember that song? That's... All right, she did it better, but you... you. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so this guy wrote an app for the iPhone that auto-tunes you. And you sing into it, and you listen to yourself auto-tune through the earbuds, and there's musical backgrounds you can sing with. So this is T-Pain on Jimmy Kimmel Live using his own app for comedic purposes. So, Mr. President, what would your health plan do for America? It provides health insurance to people who don't have it. Well, that sounds good, Mr. President, but I uh, tell you what, could sound a whole lot better. What do you think? Basically, we've got 80% agreement. We got 80% agreement. The 47 million Americans who don't have any health insurance at all. No health insurance at all. I'm not the first president to take up this cause, but I am determined to be the last. Determined to be the last. Doctors, Doctors, patients, patients hospitals, hospitals, wasting money, your money, healthcare, healthcare, Medicare, Medicare, pharmaceutical industry, pharmaceutical diabetes, diabetes, foot amputation, amputation. When are we gonna say enough is enough? When enough is enough is enough? Thank you. God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. So are you tracking the cultural ripples here? A, a, a University of California music professor writes an app that becomes a cultural phenomenon that goes on national TV that I'm showing you at a conference. I mean, it's like this endless loop of cultural ripples. Whoa, whoa sorry, sorry, sorry. I want... <laughs> so, Mr. President. Stop, for God's sake. All right, this is the next wave in apps. This is augmented reality where the video camera has superimposed information from the cellular network and the internet. This is in London. You can hold this thing up. It tells you what subway is under your feet. And then if you hold it like this, it tells you which way the subway station is that you're looking down that road. It's absolutely unbelievable. This is called Twitter Round. It's a real app. It shows you who's using Twitter in the building you're looking at. And you can tap him to see what he's saying. Oh, yes. The only thing more amazing than that is this one, facial recognition for people in your book, in your address book, identifies the guy, tells you his social networking information so that you can tap away and look up the guy or write to him. So the, the, this, the possibilities are absolutely endless. I happen to be colorblind, and all growing up I was made fun of because my clothes never match. All I dreamed of was this app. It's a dollar 
it uses the camera to look at your clothes and it tells you what color they are by name. 47 years old and I can finally dress myself. I, I really think that we're, this is just the beginning. This one I made up, but you, you can get the idea. Um, <laughs> My son's such a good sport. Um, so I'm talking about the iPhone a lot, but it's not just iPhone, it's the Android, it's the new Windows 7 phones, the Palm Pre, the, the Blackberry, they all have app stores, and they're all going for the same idea to turn this into the new personal computer. Um, the next one I want to talk about cameras, because there's some really cool things going on. Um, all in the history of digital cameras, there's been this, this conflict between the size of the camera and the, the quality of the pictures it takes. If you want good pictures, you need an SLR, this huge thing on the left. Of course, you wear one of those around your, on your neck on vacation, you look like an absolute tourist moron. What you want is one of these cute little ones, but the pictures aren't as good. So these are pictures that you could take with an SLR, the big one, but not with the little one. So a fuss with the shutter speed, pictures in low light without the flash, not possible with little cameras. Um, look how this, the middle ground is in focus, but the background is blurred and the foreground is blurred. Not possible with little cameras. They keep everything in focus. So the problem is, how do we get, oh, how do we get the, the, big, the big quality pictures from the big cameras into a little camera? So first of all, you should know that what you think determines a camera's quality, which is how many megapixels it has, is complete bull. I, I blew this apart with a test in the New York Times two years ago. I printed the same photograph at 5, 8, and 13 megapixels, the same one, and I stopped 50 people in the public library and asked them to see if they could identify which was which. They could not. 49 of them guessed wrong. One person got it right, but I think she was just lucky. Um, anyway, what does matter in a camera is how big the light sensor is. It's this chip inside. On your little pocket cameras, it's half of this size. On the professional cameras that cost $5,000, they're these huge full size frame of film. On most SLRs for consumers, they're about this big. That is what makes a good picture. It makes all the difference. So how can we get a big sensor into a little camera? Well, last year, Olympus and Panasonic got together and said, hey, what if we got rid of the mirror mechanism that bounces the light from the lens up into your eye and instead gave you a little tiny TV screen to look into as the viewfinder, then we can collapse the camera in two dimensions, have the same size sensor as the big thing, but be much smaller. And then Sony said, oh, we can do better than that. And they just came out with this. This is the smallest SLR in the world. It is, I mean, really, if you take the lens off, it's no bigger than a pocket camera, but look at the sensor. It's an SLR sensor. Yeah, you in the back, you might have to lean forward. Yeah. Um, and it takes interchangeable lenses, and the pictures are just the same as you'd get from one of those big, huge black SLRs. Absolutely amazing. And then the little camera makers are working from the opposite direction. This is the, the Canon S90 or S95. Smile. So I just took this amazing, amazing picture of you in a situation that should have required a flash and is absolutely gorgeous because they quadrupled the standard little camera's chip size in there and also the price. It's <laughs> $400, but, but uh, the pictures are totally amazing and all these other companies are, are jumping on that bandwagon. There are also these other amazing uh, uh, camera types. People are saying, all right, we're done trying to make more megapixels because we all now know that that doesn't really matter. Um, why can't we make waterproof cameras or Casio makes one that takes a hundred shots in a second, like brrrr. So you get a choice when your kid hits the home run swing. You can pick this one or this one or this one. You can pick which one you want. And this one, this, believe it or not, is the very world's very first 3D camera. So it has two lenses and no battery. <laughs> uh, no batteries in there. Anyway, two lenses and, um, well, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. It, uh, it looks like one of those one of those postcards where you move your head and you can see behind things. It's pretty wild. And then if you get a 3D TV, you can hook it up to that and actually film 3D movies on your own. 3D is the next wave. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, the, the, the communications technologies are going crazy. For some time, you've been able to make free phone calls 
computer to computer. You wear a headset, you call somebody else using this free app called Skype. 400 million people have downloaded it. <laughs> it's really funny, usually people our age get into Skype for the first time when their kid does a semester abroad, right? I'm not calling no $5 a minute AT&T to my kid. So it's like, Timmy, are you there? You know, it's like, <laughs> so cute to watch these people. Um, But wouldn't it be awesome if you could get Skype off the computer and onto your phone? If you could make free phone calls on your phone? That is what you can do now. It's for the iPhone and Blackberry and Android. And free calls to other Skype people, not to phone numbers, but it's only like two cents a minute to phone numbers. Um, but just look at the, here, AT&T's price for a phone call to China is $5 a minute. Skype from your phone two cents. Um, this one takes a little explanation, but this is even more mind-frying to me. For $10 a month, you can get an iPhone app called Line 2 that gives the phone a second phone number. You can use it as your business line or something. Um, the beauty of this thing is that whenever you're in a Wi-Fi hotspot, all the calls are free. It automatically sends your call over the internet instead of over AT&T. You only use AT&T when you're outside not in Wi-Fi. Or are you ever outside of... <laughs> and so, also unlimited texting. So what you do is you cancel your AT&T texting plan. That's $20 a month unlimited. You cancel, you, you drop to the lowest number of minutes for AT&T, and you're saving like $40 or $60 a month on your iPhone plan. And you can make calls indoors where you don't have an AT&T cell signal, right? Because Wi-Fi is usually indoors and cellular is usually outdoors. It's completely game-changing. It explains, Skype and Line 2 explains why nobody gets landlines anymore. You show me one college kid who graduates and gets their first apartment and says, okay, let's call up, you know, Ma Bell and get a landline. They think that's ridiculous. Nobody does that. Um, there are no units or axes on this graph. I'm just trying to make a point. Um, <laughs> I think you get what I'm driving at. Um, the last category um, is, is the field of entertainment, and the, the, the big hot thing these days um, is, uh, is uh, watching internet videos on your, on your TV. This is the Apple TV. It's 100 bucks, and the idea here is you hook up this thing to your, um, to your TV, and now you can rent TV episodes you missed for a dollar. I think it's a great, great concept. I mean, someday, if the networks all jump on, Thanks so much. Do you want it? Is it? You know, I've got three, so yeah. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, they, they, s if the networks will jump on, we could literally cancel our cable and buy the shows we want to watch a la carte. I mean, we'd save so much money and have so much flexibility. Um, Google TV this this week came out with their own version of it. I'm going to review that in the in the Times this week. Um, so far. Uh, and they also show you YouTube and other, you know, other videos from websites on your TV. So far, the public has never shown much of an appetite for sitting on their couch and watching YouTube on the TV, so I have my doubts about that. Um, but the other really amazing thing is, if, if you're a Netflix member, right, you're paying $9 a month to get a DVD mailed to you, they have this new thing, well, new, two years old, um, called Watch Now. They have 12,000 movies, including a lot of good ones, that you can watch right now what did I say? <laughs> uh, you can watch right now on your laptop, on your phone, streaming over the internet for nothing, for free, unlimited, 12,000 movies. That'll last you the whole spring break. Um, and the beauty of it is, what this does is it really changes the rules for watching movies, if you think about it. Because when in life have you ever been billed for movie, wa movie watching other than per movie? You buy a ticket to a movie theater, you rent a DVD, you rent a pay-per-view, you're always paying by the movie, right? Never have you been able to movie surf before. But with, with Watch Now, you're like, hey, honey, let's watch an action comedy. Oh, this is awful. Click, let's try this one. That's never been possible before. It's crazy. Somebody came up and said, oh, did you see Twister? And I'm like, oh, no, I never saw that. And he's like, well, the movie's really bad, but just watch the last 10 minutes. Okay. I can do that. Um, I would love to show this to you, 
but you're all on Twitter or something. Um, and then the other really wild thing is, is this thing. This thing is, is not brand new, but it still blows my mind. It's called the Sling Box. You connect it to your home entertainment theater system at home, right? And then you can watch what's on your TiVo cable system satellite dish on your phone, on your laptop, wherever you go. So you're in some hotel room somewhere, somewhere and they want, how much do they charge to watch a movie in a hotel room now? Like $69 or something? Um, and you're like, no, I'm already paying for movies at home. I'll just watch it right now and give the hotel nothing. Should we try it? Let's just try it. Let's, okay, so this is it. This is, this is the actual, the, oh yeah, Conference we have title it. Game is be hosted by okay, the so I'm actually the watching, record, look, I can the change the channel. Will be shared equally among all uh, if that's schools. the channel button. It's not what my remote, so I don't know. Has a um, <laughs> well, Eric, I anyway, think so I can pause it, I can change exactly the channel, right. I can switch inputs, I can go full screen, and basically, I am watching the TV of the Slingbox PR guy in California. Whenever I do this, you could not oh, here. eliminate that. The alums care about control. that too. Alums who don't care about Can football care about those rivalries because they schedule events around them. And then the should having pause the it. championship game at anyway, the home team. I like to picture the guy's the wife go at home watching TV while I'm doing these demos. Brian! It's doing that thing again! She has no clue. How do you feel about that? So well, that is how amazing is that, to be able to watch your own to to entertainment you channels that you've already paid for wherever you go in the world? I think it's pretty crazy. Um, anyway, so there's a quick look at what's going on. There's a lot of technology coming down the pike really fast. It's my job to keep on top of it, and even for me, it's like drinking from a fire hose. But um, on the other hand, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks so much. I'm going to sneak past you here.